I'm Mariana. I'm a research uh, officer at the University of um, RMIT University in Melbourne, Australia. And I'm going to present a little bit of this study uh, that I've been working. Uh, the title is House Gardens in Informal Settlements, Sustainable, Sustaining Food Security in Honiara. Um, so just to give you a bit of context, this is part of a climate resilient Honiara project. Uh, that is being like a long term uh, is a result of a long term uh, engagement um, that RMIT has with the local uh, stakeholders in Honiara, that is the capital city um, of the Solomon Islands. Um, and um, we're gonna I'm gonna focus um, my discussion today in in this project that it's actually a very complex and large project that involves different components. Um, but one important aspect of this uh, research is that it's based in uh, the engagement with vulnerable communities uh, living in informal settlements in peri-urban areas of Honiara. And there were five um, vulnerable hotspots that have been selected as case studies. And today I will present some of the experiencing experiences working with um, food security and gender component and focusing on the Wind Valley and Jabros communities. Um, um, just a project overview, uh, the gender has been like a key part of the Climate Resilient Honiara project, um, mainly because women are often more vulnerable to climate change impacts, especially because they have key roles of supporting uh, food security. Um, and in these particular communities, they it means that they are mainly the main um, uh, they are mainly responsible uh, to care for the house gardens and to process and prepare food um, for the household. Um, and from other researches, and um, we we know now that in periods of crisis, um, women. Um, for, for example, as COVID-19, um, women have uh, their workload increased and have also a vital uh, role on searching innovative um, um, ways to support food security in their communities. Um, so that's why we were interested to uh, capture um, women's history, uh, stories on, on food security. And, and to understand uh, how women's experiences on gardening um, were connected to the, the sustainability of food security in these communities. So for that, we have uh, conducted uh, garden surveys, workshops, interviews, and transact walks um, with these uh, women. And uh, we captured the stories on videos with drones and maps. Um, so, um, in our first, the first step was to characterize the house gardens that are locally known as soup soup gardens, mainly because um, everything, most of the things planted are used to make soup. Um, and they, that's how they call it. So we surveyed uh, 86 gardens in these two communities. And as you can see um, in these maps, the green shapes are where are the the gardens where the gardens are located. Uh, but you can also see the red colors that indicate areas where a slope is um, higher than 45 degrees. And also the blue colors that indicate areas that are prone to floods. So just to highlight some of the, the threats that uh, the natural threats um, for the maintenance of these gardens. So a lot of challenges um, to overcome here. Um, so from our survey, we found out that um, we find that 57 uh, different types of plants um, were planted in these gardens and 40% of that were trees, uh, fruit trees mainly. Um, and um, there were an average of three plants per garden. And the most frequent um, plant was banana trees. 
and uh, they were present in more than 35% of the gardens there. Um, these are just like the, the most frequent ones, but yeah. Uh, at the same time, we also um, evaluate uh, the general health condition of the, those plants. And we find out that 40% of these plants present a kind of uh, sort of damage and being um, a biological uh, attack by pests um, or diseases, the, the most um, um, observed. Um, okay, so uh, having this in mind, uh, the, the, what we actually wanted to capture were the views and the, the experiences of women. And in these uh, workshops, we identify some challenges um, about the, the house gardens. Um, so the first one um, that we, we actually ask how uh, climate change had, a, if climate change was a perceived um, um, threat uh, to, to the gardens. And most of them um, agree uh, that they, they could feel it. And, and mainly uh, by, they pointed out that the uncertainty of the weather uh, had impact on how they, they, they were planting, but also how high volumes of rain were a great concern, mainly in these areas, because they are very steep, um, that could uh, um, result in soil erosion and um, increase um, risks of landslides in the area. And <clears throat> also um, pests were perceived as a climate related issue. And they mention a lot like how beetles and snails were um, more frequent when it was too wet. Um, but another interesting thing was that most of these uh, women migrate from rural areas to um, to these peri-urban regions. And they, they noticed that the traditional garden methods that they were using um, sometimes were not um, very suitable and they need to adapt to urban areas. And mainly like understanding, like for example, uh, soil uh, fertility, that it's, it's different and like how they were interested in how to overcome these um, challenges. And of course, uh, COVID-19 was in the list and has exacerbated that um, food security issues in the community and has forced these women to work more in their uh, soup, soup gardens. Um, and they realized that this was, uh, was not enough. And most of these women had to find all the areas outside their communities um, to plant. And that's what they call the, the bush gardens. And <clears throat> we have um, uh, walked with uh, some of these women and um, we, we noticed how these bush gardens have brought different issues, um, mainly uh, mobility, land disputes, because, well, it's informal settlements in, uh, in the fringe of the city. Um, and also concerns for women's safety because they they had to walk, for example, um, more than thirty min minutes by themselves, and um, and also uh, these pictures illustrates how steep it is um, for them to be walking like long distances um, to to go and take care of these um, gardens. Um, so as um, a general key learnings from, from this project, um, the, we, we, we take, took these uh, lessons that um, this learning as um, urban gardens are very important, not just for the resilience of these communities, but for the survival. Um, and mainly in, in these this, um, periods of crisis, uh, the house gardens are not enough. So they had to find resources outside the community and finding uh, different alternatives for uh, maintaining, sustaining the food security. Um, another point that, he, that was interesting that 
the adaptation of this, this traditional gardening methods to the urbanizing env environment and climate change scenarios um, need support. And something that they mentioned on the wor workshops is that they would like to understand more about which species to plant, uh, species that will be um, more um, <clears throat> uh, sustainable and uh, would, um, in a climate change scenario, um, would uh, survive it um, uh, better and to give like better quality of crops and um, um, harvesting. Um, and they show how important was the social organization between women sustaining these gardening, gardening activities and the importance of um, uh, local organizations that uh, also support uh, um, these needs um, and help them. Um, and there, there were a lot of talks about uh, women walking together to their gardens to support each other um, and exchange of plants or yeah, exchange of knowledge that is very important for, for them to um, adapt to this different environment. Um, and um, also important, we know that they, these are private areas, so, but they also play an important uh, role in the, um, in the whole city. And I think, I believe that they need to be integrated in the urban planning discussion mainly in these vulnerable areas where um, urban gardens are so vital for, for these communities. Um, so next steps for this, this um, is to understand better the climate change impacts on food security and uh, comparing different uh, years and how, um, how these urban gardens have evolved uh, a long time uh, from, yeah. Um, and, and future scenarios for climate change. Yeah, thank you very much.